Welcome to Accounting 101, Lesson 5 in the series. This one is all about balancing off the T accounts. So I should probably give a credit to Osborne Books. I'm using their slides because they're quite excellent. Um, so why reinvent the wheel? So I hope that's okay with them. Um, first of all then, what are account balances and why are they needed? So the balance of a T account is the difference between the totals of the debits and the credits. And we need to balance these accounts off to find out how much perhaps is owed by a customer, owed to a supplier, how much we've spent on a particular expense. So as I mentioned, examples there could be trade receivables, trade payables balances, how much do our customers owe us, how much do we owe to suppliers, how much have we spent on a particular expense over a period of time, what are our purchases, what are our sales. Um, all of these balances are going to provide useful information for the owners of the business, managers, um, and ultimately they're going to be entered onto something called a trial balance. So the trial balance is something that's extracted from the T accounts and it's used as a check to make sure that the arithmetic of the double entry is correct. Okay, so when are the double entry accounts balanced? Um, usually this is done on a monthly basis. So at the end of every month, all of the T accounts are balanced. A trial balance is drawn up from those balances. Um, and if the debits and the credits are equal, we can be um, assured that the double entry is correct. The arithmetic is correct. Might not mean that everything's in the right place, but the, uh, the debits and the credits are equal. So as I said, usually that will be done at the end of every month, but it will certainly need to be done at the end of every year in order to produce the final accounts of the business. So we've got an example here. This is the account of M. Owen, who's a trade receivable. So this business has sold goods on credit to M. Owen. So you can see here the T account, debits on the left side, credits on the right side. We've already got a number of transactions posted in there. So we can see that on the 1st of June, he had a balance brought down, or she, of £5,000. So M. Owen owed the business £5,000. That's on the debit side, because if you remember, trade receivables are on the debit side, dear and clip. If you look at my little video there about mnemonics to help you remember what goes where. But trade receivables are an asset. They're a current asset of the business, something that's going to be owed to the business for less than a year. So the balance brought down, M. Owen owed the business £5,000 on the 1st of June. You can see here that M. Owen has purchased more stuff from the business. So sales have been made 17th of June and the 24th of June for 1,000 and 2,000 respectively. Over on the credit side here, um, on the 15th of June, M. Owen has returned some goods to the business. So sales returns there are credited out of M. Owen's account. The corresponding debit would be into the sales returns account. Just as with the sales entries, they're debited to M. Owen to increase the amount that he or she owes to the business, but they will be credited to the sales account. Remember, sales is a source of income and it's always going to be on the credit side in the sales account. Therefore, we need the debit on the trade receivable account. And then on 28th of June, we can see here there's a bank transaction, £4,000. So M. Owen has paid the business £4,000. We'd have debited it to the bank account to increase that asset, and we've credited it to M. Owen's account to reduce the amount that they owe to the business. Okay, so those are the transactions that have happened. What we now need to do is balance that account off to show how much M. Owen owes at the end of June. So the way we're going to do that is, first of all, to total up each of those columns, the debits and the credits. So if we add up the 5,000 plus the 1,000 plus the 2,000, we can see that makes 8,000 pounds. We don't want to write that anywhere at the moment. We just need to make a note of it. Um, and then same for the credit side, we've got 1,000 plus 4,000, which equals 5,000. So we can see that one minus the other is going to give us a balance at the end of the month of 3,000 pounds. But we just need to see what the process is. So don't write anything in your T account just at the moment. Um, we're going to find out the difference between the two. So as we worked out, £8,000 is on the debit side, 5000 is on the credit side. So M. Owen owes the business, <coughs> excuse me, £3,000. That's the amount that's owing at the end of June. So the way to balance it off is that we're going to write the date and the description balance CD, or BAL CD for short, um, on the credit side. So we're filling in the gap, we're kind of forcing this account to balance. And what we're actually doing is crediting June with the difference, the £3,000, and we're going to be bringing it down just as the 1st of June had a balance brought down. On the 1st of July, we're going to be having a BAL BD. But for the moment, we just need to balance off June. So we've got that balance carried down. And the idea is to make both sides equal. So we're making both sides add up to £8,000. We're forcing this T account to balance by crediting in there 
£3,000 and we're saying it's a balance carried down, we're carrying it down to the next month. And on the 1st of July, we're going to be bringing it down on the debit side um, of the T account. Okay, so we need to make sure that the T account balances, these two lines need to be parallel with one another. And then on the 1st of um, July, we can actually bring down the balance on the opposite side. So this £3,000 is being carried out of June and into July. So BAL BD, £3,000. And then when we come to do the, the trial balance, that £3,000 will be entered on the debit side of the trial balance. So what we're doing here, just a reminder, we're crediting June and we're debiting 1st of July. So we're ruling off the T account, we're balancing it off and taking the balance down into the following month. Okay. So what we've done then, just a quick summary, is to add up both of the T accounts, find the difference, or both of the, sorry, the debit and the credit columns, find the difference between the two, total up both sides, debits and credits are equal, and then bring the balance down on the 1st of July. Okay, and that follows because it's an asset, it's a £3,000 debit balance um, that M. Owen owes to the business. Okay, if we look at another trade receivable account, this time we've got somebody called Jay Green. So we've got seven plus two plus one, by my reckoning that's £10,000 on the debit side. We've got £6,000 on the credit side, the difference being £4,000 that Jay Green owes to the business. So the BAL CD is £4,000. And yet again, we're forcing the T account to agree, make sure that both sides are equal. So we've got £10,000 on the debit, £10,000 on the credit, 1st of July, the balance is brought down, so CD carried down here at the end of June, 1st of July, balance brought down £4,000. Okay. If we've got an expense account, we should find that we've got just entries on the debit side. So here we've got 1st of March, BAL BD, £9,000. 20th of March, we've paid another £1,000. There's nothing on the credit side, no difference to find. So we can just add up that total. 9 plus 1 is £10,000. So the balance carried down, balance CD carried down into April is £10,000. We need to rule it off, prove that the two accounts or the two sides of the account are equal. And then on the 1st of April, we've got a balance brought down of £10,000. Okay, so we'll look at a trade payable account next. So trade payables, these are amounts that the business owes to its suppliers. So our Gupta is a supplier of the business. On the 1st of June, the business owed our Gupta £4,000. It's on the credit side because it's a liability. It's going to be current liability because it will be due for payment within 12 months. So on the 28th of June, the business has purchased another £2,000 worth of goods. So we've got a total of £6,000 on the credit side. But if you look here on the 15th of June, the business has paid our Gupta £4,000. So that would have been credited out of the bank account to reduce that asset. Remember, payments out of the bank are always on the credit side of the bank account. And then we debit the Our Gupta account here to reduce the amount that we owe to Our Gupta. On the 18th of June, we've returned some goods. The business has sent goods back, £1,000 worth returned to Our Gupta. So we've debited the Our Gupta account and we're crediting purchase return. So we've got £6,000 here on the credit side and 5000 on the debit side. So this means that we still owe Our Gupta at the 30th of June. £1,000. So the balance carried down £1,000 there. Both sides now add up to £6,000. And then on the 1st of July, we've got a balance brought down of £1,000. And that's the amount that's owing to our Gupta on the 1st of July. So accounts with a nil balance next, we've got somebody called R. James. Now we can tell that R. James is a trade receivable by what's gone on in the T account. So balance brought down was on the debit side at the start of the month. Our James owed the business £10,000. We've sold another £1,000 worth of goods to our James on the 18th of June. Our James has returned those goods to us on the 20th of June and then paid us the balance owing of £10,000 on the 28th of June. So there's no BAL CD because the debits add up to 11000 and so do the credits. So all we do is just prove that that's the case. Two identical figures there, no BAL CD. Don't do a BAL CD for zero. You just rule it off to prove that the account has balanced. So yeah, it says there that R. James has settled his account. Well, it might be her account, we don't know. 
um, and there's no balance to carry down. So just to remind you here of how to um, balance the T accounts, the double entry accounts, make sure that you add up the debits, add up the credits, write the totals off to one side while you work out the difference, and then plug the gap. So in the month that you're balancing off, plug the gap to make sure that both sides add up to the same amount. So in this case, this is back to the um, MO in account, £8,000 on each side. And then bring down the balance. It comes across diagonally. So it was a credit in June. We're crediting it out of June. It's a debit balance overall. But to get rid of it from June, we're crediting June's T account. And then we're bringing it down on the 1st of July as a debit, £3,000. So a quick summary then about balancing the double entry accounts. Um, account balances are going to provide us with useful information. So how much do customers owe to us? How much do we owe to trade payables, our suppliers? How much are our expenses? What are our sales? What are our purchases? It's going to help our owners and managers of the business to work out profit and to monitor and control outgoings. Um, and these balances are also useful in assembling a trial balance to check that the arithmetic works out at the end. Thanks very much for watching.